Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Salatu Salam ala Rasulullah. Tonight on the night of the second of Sha'ban, 1440, we're going to Imam Al Bukhari al Book, Al Ada Al Mufrad, a code for everyday living, the example of the early Muslims. Tonight's chapter is chapter 296, The Virtues of Supplication. Stop. Hadith number 712. Abu Hurairah said, the Prophet وسلم, said, nothing is dearer to Allah than supplication. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursaleen, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ala man tabi'ahu da'ahum ila yawmideen. Indeed, all praises you to Allah. May peace and blessings be upon his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. We still talking about the chapters that regarding the dua and we have said number of times the dua is one of the most beloved worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which shows the person's humbleness and the person's need to Allah the Almighty Azza wa Jal and we have discussed alhamdulillah so many ad'iya that the Prophet of Allah used to say one of those things that he says is that Allah Azza wa Jal will be angry if you don't call upon him Allah Azza wa Jal will be angry if you don't call upon him. Not only that, he said, and he called those people who do not make supplication to Allah are mustakbirun. They are people who are acting in arrogance. When the person stretches his arms and asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it shows that he is in need of Allah and he's hoping that Allah will help him subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this chapter, he says, Fadl dua the virtues of the dua. The virtues of the dua, the best dua is that, is that they say that the dua is the ibadah. A dua huwa al ibadah. The dua is the ibadah. So there is nothing more noble, more closer in ibadah than the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it shows that the person is in need and it shows the power of Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will give you and nobody else. So when you do this and when you say this, it includes all types of Tawheed in it. Tawheed al-Rububiyya, Tawheed al-Luhiyya, and Tawheed al-Asma' wa sifat Because when you call upon Allah, you are knowing that Allah is the Lord. And when you call upon Allah, you know that you are not going to be having any call to anybody else. And that's Uluhiyya. And when you call upon Allah, you use the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His attributes. So that's the Tawheed al-Asma' wa sifat The dua for validity to be fulfilled, it has to fulfill five conditions. If there is no conditions of those, uh, or this one of the conditions are not missing, is missing, then the dua will not be fulfilled. First condition, the person needs to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he has no sincerity in his dua, then the dua will not be answered. So when you call upon Allah, you have sincerity. That means you are in your heart seeking only the pleasure of Allah. Not seeking the people who's looking at you when you're making the dua. Can I just ask the brothers to come forward please as much as they can? The ones who keep students of mine, they know that inshallah. But the ones who are customers for the first time, please make sure that you get closer in order to get the barakah of the dua as well. So the first condition, al-ikhlas. Al-ikhlas lillah. You are in your heart knowing that you want the pleasure of Allah when you make this dua. That's the sincerity. Number two, al mutabah That is condition of that you are following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you are using his dua. You're not making your own dua. Some of the people who are not I'm talking about the ones who are from the general mass, which they don't have any memorization of any dua. No, they are learned people, but they make their own dua. The rhyme dua. They make even books about that. And we say a number of times, why do you want to put the dua of the Prophet of Allah aside and you use your own dua? And that's from the, as I said, from the conditions for your dua to be accepted. The third as well condition is that you have to have certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill your dua. al yaqeen That Allah azza wa jal will fulfill your dua. If you have no certainty in your heart that Allah will not fulfill your dua, then why are you calling upon Him? So if you don't have that condition in your heart, then your dua will be not be responded. So you have certain that Allah is going to give you one of the three. Either straight away fulfillment of this earth, or He's going to save that for you in the day of resurrection, or He will push away an evil, which is equivalent to the dua that you have asked. The fourth condition, you have to have khashya, khushu'a, meaning scrupulous. 
uh, to be uh, having when you ask in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have the raghab which is hoping for the reward and the rahab you are fearing the, uh, the punishment so the rahab and the rahab and the khushu' that's another condition for your dua to be accepted and number five of the last one is that when you ask you don't hesitate you don't say oh lord if you wish to give me this give me that no man da'a fal yajzim fi talab let him confirm his question his, his request oh lord i want this so you don't say if allah if you will give me that and give me this so those five conditions bear them in mind those five conditions as well they are followed with etiquette of the dua so if you don't have the etiquette of the dua as well you're going to lose so fulfilling the five conditions is a sign but for you to have the dua most likely fulfilled then you have to have what we call the etiquette of the dua. From those etiquette of the dua, that the person starts with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he makes his dua, he praises Allah azza wa jal, first of all, and after that he starts requesting Allah and making the supplication. Another etiquette is that to have consistency when you make the dua. It's not just when you dua, when you are in disaster, you make dua upon Allah. Even in prosperity time. So Allah wants to see from you that you are always in need of Him. Whether you are in prosperity or whether you are in uh, disaster and calamity. So the people most likely always make the dua when they are what? In disaster. But when they are in prosperity, they forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's another etiquette of making the dua. A third etiquette of making this dua is also when the person makes the dua, he does not call upon his family. Or upon his children, upon his wife. He doesn't call it Allah against his own children, his own wealth and his money. So that's an etiquette. Don't make dua against them. And from the etiquette of the dua that you have, you make the dua with a, with a voice which is not shouting. And of course, not you as well saying something in your heart. So you're saying it between mukhafatati wal mujahara, between saying it too low and too high. That's from the etiquette of the dua. Also, from the etiquette of the dua that you are making tadarra, you beseech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're asking Allah, and you are, you are, you are uh, asking Allah with full heart, tadarra ila Allah. And on, that, on top of that, another etiquette which is to cry, to weep from the fear of Allah. So Allah wants to see from you that when you make the dua, there is tears coming from your eyes. And if you are not making tears, that means you are already actually playing in your dua. So the khashya in your heart produces the tears in your heart. So if you have that, then that's an etiquette. Also from the etiquette of the dua is a tawassul. You make it tawassul by the good things that you have done. Tawassul by the names of Allah. Tawassul by the attributes of Allah. Tawassul by a good action, a good iman that you have made. Like the people who were blocked with the rock, they've asked each one of them, the three of them, asked with the best of me that he made sincerely to Allah. So a tawassul, and when you make the dua, I beseech you, O oh Lord, give me this because of my love to the Prophet O oh Lord, give me this because of my uh, sincere ibadah in my, in my uh, charity or in my prayer. So you're asking Allah tawassul with you. From the etiquette as well, raise up your hands, Akhi. Raise up your hands from the etiquette. For very Allah's messenger, he said, the person who raises up his hand, Allah is shy to return his hand empty. So after you make your dua, with your with the hands, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shy. Allah is shy to return your hand empty. That means He will respond to your dua. Also from the etiquette is to have the khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always. From the condition we said, the khushu' and here we have the khashya of Allah. So when you make a dua, you have always ah, khashya, khushu' khashya. Which is the khashya is the fear, knowing who you are fearing. That's the difference between khashya and khawf. Khawf, you're fearing something which you don't know about. But the khashya, you're fearing someone or something that you know. So you're fearing Allah with knowing who is Allah. Also from the etiquette of the dua, persistency, ya akhi. So don't give up. Ilhah. Oh Lord, give me this. Oh Lord, give me that. So you ask. So you're not asking somebody. If you ask somebody, give me my headache. He says, please, don't repeat your, your request because I've just heard it before. But Allah wants you to persist and ask Him. Oh Lord, I ask this and I want to ask you again. I want to ask you again. And from the etiquette as well, to confess to Allah with your sins. Like Allah's Messenger, He said, Allahumma inni dhalamtu nafsi dhuman kathira, faghfir li, fa innahu la yafiru dhunuba illa. In your dua, I have wronged myself, my Lord. So you're not saying, oh Lord, you know that I've done nothing wrong. You should fulfill my dua. What is this? So you are confessing before your Lord. And Allah would smile. But look, this person knows that he had sinned, and he knows that he's got a Lord, he forgives. So you are 
confessing to the Almighty, I am a sinner and I'm asking your mercy, O oh Lord, I'm asking you to fulfill this dua. So all of this, when you confess, inshallah, from the etiquette of the dua. Um, if we can really as well think about, yes, from the etiquette of the dua, to say it three times. Prophet Salim used to say the dua three times. So at least you repeat it three times. Okay? So, and also, you don't put a wasita, uh, you don't go to somebody else and go and make me dua, brother. No, you make your dua. So they make the dua yourself. Don't give somebody else to make your dua on your behalf. That's another etiquette as well. Now if we have this etiquette, alhamdulillah, then we go to the things that would prevent your dua to be fulfilled. Number one, haram sources. So if you have haram money, haram drink, haram clothes, haram, how can Allah going to respond to you? Avoid the haram. So you keep away from the haram, Allah will fulfill your dua. From the also, from the thing that would prevent your dua to be fulfilled, your sins. How can you be you know, involving into sins and always sinner or sinner and you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill your dua. Finally, from the thing that would prevent your dua to be fulfilled is to call upon Allah with a sin. O oh Lord, have vulm upon such and such. How can you ask? With the if, O oh Lord, sever the kinship between so and so and so and so. O oh Lord, break the relationship between this father and his son. Billah. So when you ask to sever the kinship, that means you are asking for something which will not be fulfilled. Prophet of Allah وسلم, also told us about places, about times, and about circumstances. Places where the dua will be fulfilled, times where the dua will be fulfilled, and circumstances. I will leave that inshallah in two weeks' time. Let's just go to the following hadith, 713, which is unauthentic, though 714 is. 714. And Nu'man bin Bashir said, the Prophet وسلم, said, supplication is worth worship. Then he recited, translation of Recited, Udruni, astajib lakum. Call on me and I will answer you. Right. Now, we knew that before, ad-du'a mukhul ibadah is our thing. Ad-du'a is the core of the ibadah. No, the du'a is the ibadah. The Prophet وسلم, said, in the du'a huwa al-ibadah. So the most beloved ibadah to Allah is a dua supplication. And Allah says, Uduruni astajib lakum. Wa idha sa'alaka ibadi amni, ha, fa inni qareeb. He didn't say to the Prophet, say qul. You remember what we said? Every time the Prophet has been asked a question, yas'arunaka an illahi illa, qul hiya mawakitu linnas. Except for what? For the dua. If, your sla- if my slaves asked you about me, he didn't say to them, say to them, قُلْ No, no. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Straight away. There is no قُلْ in, the between, in between. To show you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would fulfill that supplication. I am there. Just call upon me. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse when he says, أُدْرُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Also he said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي The same surah, the same verse. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِ Those are the ones who are arrogant, proud, who have pride in them, to, uh, to, to, to worship me. Huh? سَيَدْخُرُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ They will enter fire, دَاخِرِينَ Meaning like with humiliation. So this ibadah mentioned the word here. It means what? The dua. Because Allah says, اُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Call upon me, then I will respond to you. Then he says, Inna الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَةِ The ones who are arrogant to worship me. The worship is means what? The dua. Because he says, Udruni أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Supplicate to me, make dua to me, I will respond to you. The ones who are arrogant to make ibadah, that means to make dua to me, they will be entering the fire, humiliated. Right. 715 is unauthentic. 716. 716. Ma'kin bin Yasar said Yasar, Yasar. Ma'kin bin Yasar. Ma'kin bin Yasar said, I went with Abu Bakr as Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Abu Bakr, inward shirk, associating other things with Allah, among you is more hidden than the ant trail. Abu Bakr said, Is there any other way of associating than putting another God with Allah? The Prophet said, By him who holds my soul in his hand, there, there is a ship association more hidden than the entrail. 
Shall I tell you something that will remove the lesser and greater shirk if you say it? He went on to say, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from, the, from associating anything with you knowingly. I ask forgiveness from you from associating anything with you unknowingly. طيب. Ma'akad ibn Yasar, he says, I went with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiyallahu to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, O oh, Abu Bakr, a shirk, shirk, polytheism, in you, not in you as in Abu Bakr, in you as the ummah, including the sahaba, in you, akhfa min dabib al is more hidden than the Sound of the crawling ant. First of all, the Prophet ﷺ, he chose him this hadith to talk to the most beloved person to Allah after the Prophets. A person, if you want to think about shirk in anybody, you will never think about shirk in Abu Bakr. Yet he says that to him. Now, I mean, this hadith is not directed to the kuffar. It's directed to the one, to the righteous, not to any Muslim, the righteous people. The one who make their ibadah when they recite Quran, when they teach the deen, when they do anything and they don't have sincerity to Allah, they are basically after something else. What are they going to go on the day of resurrection? That's shirk. Without them knowing or not, they say, Qala Allah, Qala Rasul. They're reciting the Quran, they're holding the Quran. But they're not holding it for the sake of Allah. They're holding it because we want people to say, Oh, he's MashaAllah, reader. His teaching is not because he's teaching, because he wanted, Oh, what a teacher. Allah knows what is in the heart. On the day of resurrection, everything will be exposed. And then, no way you're going to regret, because your regret is too late. You can't be sent back to the earth to do something which is good. So do it now, Akhi, and make sure that you seek in the knowledge for the sake of Allah. You're reading the Quran for the sake of Allah. This is the hadith. You would expect this hadith to be said to somebody, not like Abu Bakr, somebody who is maybe a hypocrite. But to Abu Bakr, shirk in you. Listen to this. This is, the scholars, they said, the most threatening hadith regarding the shirk. The most threatening hadith that would tell the people the shirk is something is not you tamper, to tamper with. To take it very seriously. So it's not talking about the shirk al-akbar. It's talking about the what? Shirk al-asr. Maybe he's talking about the shirk al-akbar, but the hidden one. Because the shirk al-akbar is hidden and open. Shirk al-asr is hidden and open. So he's talking about the shirk, the hidden. Because the hidden shirk it starts with the riyak, which is asr. But it becomes in every ibad of yours, becomes akbar. So the hidden shirk can be akbar as well, major. So if I know that, if I know this, and I need to make sure that my ibadah is sincerely to Allah. Abu Bakr, he is shaken. Abu Bakr, imagine he heard this. Prophet of Allah is telling him this hadith. Messenger of Allah, he telling me this. That shirk is only to make another deity with Allah, which none of us would do. Abu Bakr will not do it. Not any companion, he would do it. To make another deity, to, to have another God with Allah. No way. So why are you saying this to me? This is what Abu Bakr is saying. When you say the, the shirk is hidden. It's for us it's not hidden. It's open. You take an idol to worship it, to prostrate to a statue. That's a shirk. So the Prophet وسلم, he says, No Abu Bakr, you're wrong. By the one in whose hand is my soul. لَشِرْكُ فِيكُمْ خَفِيْ أَخْفَى مِنْ دَبِيبِ النَّمْلِ Verily shirk in you, Sahaba, companions, you, Muslims, Ummah, especially the righteous people, the one who come to the prayer, the one who goes to the front row, the one who is seeking the, de- the, the Jannah, it goes into them. You have to understand, you're not immune against shirk if Abu Bakr was addressed with this hadith. You're not immune against shirk, Akhi. Shirk can penetrate your ibadah. Every time you hold the Qur'an, every time you want to lead the prayer, every time you recite, the first three categories of people who will be chucked into the hellfire, they're not Christian, they're not Jews, they're not Hindus or Buddhists. No. First three categories of people who will be chucked into the hellfire 
are Muslims. And not any Muslims. People who what? Pray properly. MashaAllah martyrs. Oh, MashaAllah reciters. MashaAllah giving charity. But all of them, they do it for the sake of the people. All of them, they give it for the sake of the people. This person reciting, so that's like, oh, what a reciter he is. This person, he is fighting for the sake of Allah, but he's actually to be called a courageous hero. This person gives in charity because he wants to be called generous. Go to the hellfire. <coughs> All their deeds according to their right angel, the angel on the right hand side, mashallah, tick, 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 jihad, or um, they write everything. Their deeds in the scrolls is what? Absolutely 100%. But Allah knows what is in the heart, which the angel, they don't know about that. He knows that this heart, according to this tick, 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 is all of it based upon riyah. They don't want the pleasure of Allah. No one would know except for Allah. The secrets of your hearts, what goes into your heart, Allah knows about it. Nobody else. So the Prophet them. he says, Verily, shirk is more hidden than the sound of a crawling ant. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he says, A shirku akhfa. That the shirk is more hidden than the crawling of a black ant on a black smooth rock in the dark, in a, in a, in a moonless night. Imagine the normal ant, the daylight, in a normal place, in a normal on a normal surface. Does it make a sound? Okay. So what about if it's a black, on a black rock? On a smooth rock. Why smooth? Because the smooth rock, it will not... Because if it's not smooth, maybe the ant will make sort of a move there and make a sound. It's a smooth rock. And it's a moonless night. You can't see anything. Imagine. How can you see it? How can you hear it? No way. That's the shirk. And it's even more hidden than that. It goes into your knees without you knowing. Investigate, akhi. Everything that you do is very much Investigate. It's more hidden. And please just think about it. More hidden than that. I can't see it, never mind to hear it. I can't see that, not ant. So, the Prophet of Allah, out of his mercy, is telling Abu Bakr. Because once he heard this, Abu Bakr is shivering, and everybody will be scared. He says, Shall I tell you something that if you say it, it will take away from you not just the minor, even the major shirk? Say it with actions, of course. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika and nushrika bika. This is I'm going to give for everybody. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika. You're yourself. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and ushrika bika wa ana a'lam wa astaghfiruka lima la'alam. Uru, I seek refuge in you to make shirk in you what I know. How can I make shirk in you what I know this is shirk? But I seek your forgiveness for a shirk which I don't do what I don't know is a shirk. So the one that I do what I know, I want your help, Uru. To help me, to stop me from doing the shirk, which I know is a shirk. But for the one I don't know, please forgive me. Because I don't know if it's a shirk. How can I know? So for that, oh Lord, I don't know, forgive me. For the one which I know, I'm seeking your help. I seek refuge in you, shelter in you. Help me, oh Lord, not to commit a shirk while I know it's a shirk. This is a great hadith. And as I said, it's the most threatening hadith regarding the shirk. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa ana a'lam wa astaghfiruka lima la a'lam It has to be like Fatiha for you. Fatiha, you know Fatiha? Say it all the time. Tayyip, 297 chapter please. 297. Supplication when the wind drops. Hadith 717. Anas said... Whenever a strong wind blew, the Prophet said, O oh Allah, I ask you for the good of what has been sent with it, and I seek refuge with you from the evil of what has been sent with it. Even the wind, there's a dua for it. You're not allowed to insult the wind. And people, they insult the wind. To insult the wind is like to curse it. But to say that this wind is gusty, this wind is, you know, it's no problem. But to insult it, to curse it, is not allowed. So when you see a wind, there's a supplication. At the time of the Prophet, there was a very strong wind. And wind at the time of the Prophet is with what? Dust. I don't know if you've seen the wind in the desert. Oof. Not like the wind here. Very bad. You can't see anything. 
So the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Allahumma inni as'aluka khayra ma ursilat bih. O Lord, I ask you what good in it that you've set it with, I've asked you that good. Maybe there's good things in it. And a'udhu bika min sharri ma ursilat bih. And I seek refuge in you, Lord, from the evil for what it was sent for. So, you remember with me what happened to the people of Ad? People of Ad, they had what? A wind that produced what? A cloud. But that cloud, they thought there is what in it? Rain. They say, ah, it's going to rain onto us. But it was what? This is what you have hastened in your dua for it. Huh? And it was real. And it was destruction that made them You know, they end the trunk tree when it is like empty. And then they were saying regarding the people of Ad that, that the trunk tree's got no heads. So they had been taken out, up and been put down. So there would be no heads for them. So only the body. Just like the trunk of a palm tree. No heads. A punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the person always asks Allah Azza wa Jal when he sees a wind, the good of it. And seek refuge in Allah from the what? The bad of it. We're going to have more as well for the wind to supplication. Following hadith, 718. 718. Salam said, Ibn al When the wind blew strongly, the Prophet would say, Allahumma la qihad la aqimah. Meaning? Oh Allah. May it bring fertility and not barrenness. So that the wind is like a pregnant woman. A woman huh? It's like a pregnant woman. What sort of pregnancy is it going to have? Is it a bad child or a good child? So we want that to be a good produce. So, Allahumma la qiha, la aqima. La qiha, to give fertility, that means a good thing. Aqima, which is a barren, gives you nothing. Aqima means a barren. Gives you no water, nothing for the, no help. So we want it to be laqihah with khayr, following hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talked about that, uh, about al-lawaqih. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, wa arsalna riyaha lawaqih. We have sent the wind to be fertilizers. Lawaqih, full of rain. Now, chapter, chapter 298. Do not curse the wind. 719. Ubay said, do not curse the wind. When you see something you dislike in the wind, say, Oh, oh Allah, we ask you for the good of this wind and the good of what it contains and the good of what it has been sent with. We seek refuge with you from the evil of this wind and the evil of what it has been sent with. Can I ask you to drink that? It's nice. Yeah, but it's too much sugar for me here now. Exactly. Very nice. Let us This is again. Do not curse the wind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow us to curse inanimate things. Especially like the time. Don't let us subbu dahr. Let us subbu deek. Don't curse. Let us subbu. Don't even the camel. If you insult it, you're not allowed to milk it. You're not allowed to ride it. Because it's under the curse. Don't curse it. But you're allowed to curse a human being. Subhanallah. You're not allowed to curse an animal. And like listen, even wind, you're allowed to curse a human being. You're allowed to curse even a Muslim. If you deserve to be cursed. Because the person, he has a choice. Right or wrong. To do good or evil. For what if you remember with me, when the neighbor came to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Messenger of Allah, my neighbor harms me. What should I do? Prophet Allah said, okay, take your stuff outside the house. So he went home and he took his furniture outside his house. He put it outside on the road. So the people coming, what's wrong, my dear? So my neighbor, he is you know, annoying me. It doesn't make me settle and relax and everything. May Allah curse your neighbor. Every person, may Allah curse your neighbor. They give him the curse. So a neighbor, his neighbor heard about the curse. He went to the Prophet, so I said, the messenger of Allah, please. Tell my neighbor to take his stuff inside and I will not harm him again. He said, very the curse of Allah and the angels with the curse of the people. Not just the curse of the people on you, the curse of what? Of Allah and his angels on you, with the people. So he stopped you know, harming his neighbor. So there is 
to curse the person, even a particular person, for a reason, Prophet Allah is allowed. It's a controversial amongst the scholars, but we have the opinion it's, it's, it's allowed as long as there is what? Reason. The curse for the general kuffar. Ma'atullah al kafiri. Curse, general. But curse upon the wind. The wind has got no uh, will on itself. So you're cursing basically who? Allah. <coughs> the one who made the wind. When you curse the time, the time is not a, an, an individual that he runs himself by himself. So you're cursing behind that. It's Allah. Let us burriah. You're cursing the deek. Don't curse for the deek when he's what? He is making that sound for the people to wake up for the fajr fire. Don't even set the, cro- uh, the, what, the rooster. Cockroach. The cockroach. Mm-hmm. Cockroach the rooster. Know the rooster? Yeah, rooster. Yeah, rooster. Yeah, yeah. Just like Allah. <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> the one who makes the sound in the morning. Uh-huh. Yeah, rooster as well. You've seen the roosters in a chicken rooster? Yeah. They got the sign of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hen. Toy. Um, but there are animals which Allah will put bad into them. Like al which is the rat. Uh, they are cursed, the akram, snakes. Prophet of Allah وسلم, he was stung by akram, by, by scorpion. Lana. He cursed the akram. Because he stung him in his and he brought some salt and water, and that's why that was a medicine. If you don't have any medicine or uh, a nearby chemistry or doctor, Take it with the water and salt and rub where you have been stung with a scorpion. He said, La'an Allahu al-Aqram. Allah had cursed. He's not saying, May Allah curse the Aqram. No, Allah Himself cursed the scorpion. La tada'u musalliyan. He does not leave the person who prays on his own. And imagine that you are praying, you see a scorpion. Are you going to be praying on this relaxingly? <laughs> You'll be watching, where's that scorpion come? <laughs> so He will not leave you alone. He will not leave you to. To pray it properly. That's why the scorpion, you're allowed to kill it while you pray. So you don't have to interrupt your prayer. So you just kill him and, while you pray. So you could just go and follow him while you are praying. Not to, to go and search for scorpions while praying. No, no, he came to you. Alhamdulillah. That's a thunder. <laughs> Wake up call, mashallah, tabarakallah. But he's here giving us a, a, a bigger dua now. He says, Allahumma inna nas'aluka khayra hadihi riyah. O Lord, we ask you the goodness of this wind. Qal wa khayra ma fiha. And what is good in it? So the good of this wind, this wind in itself, good. And what the good thing in, in it. Wa khayra ma ursilat bih. And the good thing that has been sent for. Wa na'udhu bika min sharri hadihi riyah. And we seek in Allah, in you, O Lord, from the evil of this wind. وَشَرِّ مَا فِيهَا And the evil was sent in it. وَشَرِّ مَا أُرْسِلَتْ بِهِ And the evil is being sent for. So all of that is a bigger dua. We're coming to 720. Now. 720. Abu Uraya said, The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, The wind is from the command of Allah. It brings mercy and punishment. So do not curse it. However, you should ask Allah for the good of it and seek refuge with Allah from its evil. Right. al <laughs> could be, he said, the power of Allah, but more appropriate to say it is from the mercy of Allah. So, al-rih Ar-Rawh means rahmah. It is from the mercy of Allah. Which is, قال, تأتي الرحمتو, تأتي بالرحمتو It brings mercy and brings punishment. Either it is mercy for the people by bringing rain, bringing the clouds to bring the rain, or it will destroy Troy the people and bring flood and bring hurricanes. So do not insult it. But ask Allah of its good. Because it brings good, it brings the rain. Okay? And seek refuge in Allah from its evil. How do I do that? Allahumma inni as'aluka khayraha wa khayra ma fiha wa khayra ma ursilat bih. Wa a'udhu bika min sharriha wa sharri ma fiha wa sharri ma ursilat bih. Remember that dua as soon as you hear the, see the wind. Like the Prophet of Allah, he said, don't insult the fever. A fever is good. You know? If I'm allowed to ask for a disease, oh Lord, give me a fever, I would have asked him. Because the fever gives you a sin expiation by thousands of sins. Because all your bones aches. That means that every bone of mine is going to get what? Sin expiation. You can't get better than the fever. So don't let us 
Do not insult humma, fever. How do you do that? So treat it with what? Water. Atfiul humma bilma. Extinguish the fire, the heat of that fever by the water. Right, so this is another hadith. Now we come to another dua when you hear the thunder. So now we've learned the dua for the shirk, the dua for the wind, now the dua for the ra'd, the thunder. Now, it's actually not lightning, it's thunder. Oh, we've got two chapters? Okay, hang on a second. Let me just see. Right, so sorry about that. Okay, just keep that one to this. Yes. Just let me follow you, because it's not all of the book. Right. Okay. Yes, the lightning, the first one. And the first one, uh, 721, is unauthentic. That's why I didn't have it. Go to the chapter 300 now. Chapter 300. When one hears thunder. Hadith 722. Is it, is it Ikrima. Ikrima. Ikrima said, When Ibn Abbas heard the sound of thunder, he would say, Glory be to the one who, whom it glorifies. <coughs> he said, Ra'ad is an angel who calls for rain as a shepherd calls for his sheep. Marshall. Give me 723 as well. 723? <clears throat> Amir bin Abdullah bin Az Zubair said, When Abdullah bin Az Zubair heard thunder, he would stop speaking and cite, Glory be to the one whose praise is glorified by the thunder and the angels in awe of him. He then, sa- he, then he said, This is a strong threat to the people of the earth. Right. Basically, when you see the thunder, thunder is always coupled with what? Lightning. Lightning, Lightning first and then the thunder. Okay? So you wait until the thunder. The thunder is an angel. Al-Radu Malak. Allah ibn Abbas, he says, whenever he hears the thunder, he would say, Subhanallahi sabbahat lahum. Or sabbahta lahum. That is, glorify to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that you have glorified him. So you are as an angel called Ra'd. You glorified Allah. I am saying glorify to the one you glorified him. Okay, you understand that? For verily he says, Ar-Ra'du Malak. Ar-Ra'du what? An angel. And he says, He's calling upon the rain, just like the shepherd calls upon his what? His sheep. Come here, the sheep. So the Ra'd is telling the cloud, come here to make rain. Imagine. So this is the Ra'd, a Ra'd is an angel who is glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يسبح الرعد بحمده والملائكة من خيفته And the angels, they glorify Allah out of his fear. Allah's messenger also had said, this is the hadith of Allah ibn Abbas from his own because he had heard the Prophet وسلم, saying about the Ra'd. He said, الرعد ملك من الملك. Prophet of Allah, he said, Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, I've heard the Prophet of Allah say, الرعد ملك من الملائكة. He's an angel from the angels. موكل بالسحاب. He is in charge of the clouds. قال بيديه أو بيديه with his two hands or with his one hand مخراق. What's a مخراق? Like a, a spear. A spear. قال مخراق يزجر به السحاب. He is making the rain to come down, or he's telling the clouds to get, to make the rain. قال مخراق. It's like a, something to poke the cloud with it. To poke the cloud. So it's like, imagine the, the cloud's got rain, it's got a balloon. Huh? And he's what? Poking that balloon to make the rain to come out. قال بيده مخراق. قال يسجر به السحاب. So the angel called الرعد is the one who's in charge of that is the the uh, the clouds. Not only that, when he pokes the clouds, he makes a sound, and that's the sound of the thunder. So the sound of the thunder is the sound when he what pokes the clouds. He's just jubi sahab. That's the sound that comes out. That's the sound that you hear from the thunder, and this is in itself tasbih. ولكن لا تفقهون تسبيح. You don't know how all of it تسبيح. سبحان الله يسبح الرعد بحمده تسبيح والملائكة من خيفته. 
So when he tells the cloud to make the rain, it will go to where Allah had ordained for that rain to take place. You must have heard with this hadith, when there was a man moving in the desert, he had heard a sound in the cloud. Isqi hadiqata fulan. Go and give rain to such and such orchard. And he had named that person. So the caller in the heavens then, he had said to command the what? The cloud. Go and give rain to such and such, mentioning the name of a person, uh, or the, the orchard of so and so. So that cloud started moving, and the man now is on the earth, started following where the cloud is going to go to. Until he ended up with an orchard there, and then started the cloud making rain just onto that huh, piece of orchard. Then after that, stopped and then left. So he's calling now somebody who's inside that orchard, that farm. He's calling him by the name that he had what? Heard in the clouds. So and so, son of so and so. <coughs> How did you know my name? But I've heard your name well in the clouds. Saying, O oh clouds, go and give rain to so and so's orchard. And I ask you, what is it that you do that I've heard a caller in the heavens? Calling onto the cloud to give you rain. <coughs> so, if you ask me this question, I mean, he does not boast about it. Because you've asked me this question, probably I divide the produce of this farm into three one third for my family, one third, and put it into the farm itself to produce, it's like a cost, and one third for the poor people. That's what it is three thirds, one third for him and his family to keep living. One third to make the, you know, the garden, the orchard, the, the, the farm to keep it you know, all running. And one third I gave it to the poor people. So this is the ra'ah. And when he says Allah, وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ مِنْ خِيفَتِهِ Also Allah, as it talks about, that the angels glorify him out of his fear. So, so the, the, um, uh, the, 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 we are scared of the thunder. When you hear the thunder, it's too close. You're scared, isn't it? You're really scared. Well... Maybe also the angel is scared. Who's a rat himself who's making this. The angels, the other angels are scared. The sound, really terrifying sound. So straight away when you hear that sound, you say what? Subhanallah. Tasabbihu al-malaika tu min arru sabbihu al-ra'du bihamdi wal-malaika tu min khifatih. Again, Subhanallah. Yusabbihu al-ra'du bihamdi wal-malaika tu min khifatih. That's a dua when you hear the thunder which will follow the lightning. 301. Chapter 301. One who asks Allah for good health. Hadith 724. Aswad bin Ismail said, Abu Bakr as Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him, said after the death of the Prophet, وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, was standing in the place where I am now standing. Then Abu Bakr wept. Then he went on. And the Prophet said, You must have truth. You must have truthfulness. It goes hand in hand with piety. You must have? You must have truthfulness. Yeah, you must have truthfulness now. It goes hand in hand with piety. And they are both in the garden. Avoid lying. It goes with airy behaviour. And they are both in the fire. Ask Allah for well-being. After certainty of belief, there is nothing better for you than well-being. Do not cut one another off. Do not work against one another. Do not envy one another. Do not become angry with one another. O oh, slaves of Allah, be brothers. طيب. Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he ascends the pulpit That's after the death of the Prophet sallam, and he says that this is the <coughs> first time I stand in the pulpit after the death of the Messenger sallam, and then he started crying. Shows you how tender the hearts of those companions and though how much they used to love their Prophet. As soon as he remembered the death of the Prophet, he's crying. Then he said, Alaykum bis Sadq. And this or these words and wordings of Abu Bakr synchronizes exactly with the words of the Prophet of Allah. Alaykum bis Sadq. Fa inna sidqa yahdi ila al bir wa inna al bir wa yahdi ila al jannah. وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَا يَصْدُقْ وَإِتَحَرَّ الصِّدْقَ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنَّ اللَّهِ صِدِّقًا 
وإياكم والكذب فإن الكذب يهدي إلى الفجور وإن الفجور يهدي إلى النار وإن الرجل لا يكذب ويتحرى الكذب حتى يكتب عند الله كذابا So this hadith from it Abu Bakr says hold on to righteousness hold on sorry to truthfulness that means be truthful all the time you should be truthful for verily truthfulness is hand in hand together with righteousness with piety bir al bir is the name or a word that encompasses all types of good and both they are in general the truthfulness and the bir and be aware of lying for very lying hand in hand with fujur mischief corruption evil doing both are in the fire and ask allah al muafa al muafa means to be safe <coughs> safe in your body from illness safe in your soul from sin so safeness in both and the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam al abbas he came to the Prophet Allah, Messenger of Allah, give me a dua. We're going to come to that, inshaAllah. Give me a dua. He said, "Sari Allah al Afiya." Oh, uncle, I'm giving you a special dua. Ask Allah for the Afiya. People came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Messenger of Allah. I want a person, Messenger of Allah, give me a dua. He says, "Ask Allah al Afwa al Afiya, pardoning and the Afiya." Dunya wal in this life in the area. Then he said, again, Masjid Jafar, I want another one. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So after he has said, Al-Afiyah. For very if you have been given Al-Afiyah for Dunya wal Akhirah, you have been successful in this Dunya and the Akhirah. Khalas, what more do you want? Why shall I give you a long dua? Look at this small one. Just remember, Allah, Asaluk Al-Afiyah wal Afiyah for Dunya wal Akhirah. It's a bit, by the way, this one is Arabi. And Arabi is very hard to memorize long du'as. A shortcut. People came to Anas, radiallahu anhu, from Basra. Oh, the long distance. Uh, teach us a du'a. He said, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, fil akhirati hasana qina adha bin nar. Okay, what else? Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, fil akhirati hasana. We came all the way, traveling distances. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا فِي الْأَخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَدَابَ النَّرِ That's it. Prophet of Allah, I learned it from him. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا That means all good things in the dunya. وَفِي الْأَخِرَةِ حَسَنَا All the good things in the akhirah. Including the grave and the barzakh. وَقِنَا عَدَابَ النَّرِ And save us from the fire. What more do you want? That's, that's, if you are, everybody ask himself, what is my target? I know my purpose is ibadah. But from the ibadah, what is my target? Isn't to go to paradise? I'll tell you what, isn't it just to save myself from the fire? Yes. If I save myself from the fire, what am I? No. I'm not in a camp between Jannah and Parah. <laughs> am I? It's camps, you know, like Palestinian camps. You about that? <laughs> Let me look nowhere. So, it's either, yeah, so if all Lord save me from the fire, that means I'm in Jannah. Khalas. But there is no camps in between. So that's my target. Waqini, adab al Allah. After this, he says, Wala taqata. Do not break your connection between the qata and muqata. Muqata, why, why, why you, you only stop speaking to your brother just for the sake of something which is not really deserved to boycott him for that. Atta severing your kinship. Walla tadabal, tadabal, give you back to the, the back of the other brother. Tadabal, tadabal. Qal walla tahasadu, envy one another. Why? Why should you envy? Believe in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, please be set. He's got a Mercedes and you got a bicycle. Alhamdulillah. Be satisfied, akhi. Walat hasad. Walat ba'ad. Don't have grudge. Hatred. Don't hold hatred. Prophet Sallallahu he told Hamza, whom had killed his uncle, if you're able to take your face away from me, as long as you're alive, do so. And that's why Hamza, sorry, Wahshi, 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 who had killed Hamza, Prophet of Allah, he said to him, if you're able to take your face away from me, because he embraced Islam, then do so. Wahshi kept away from the Prophet and he did not see the Prophet until he died. Why did he do that? Because the Prophet of Allah does not want to have what? Grudge towards Wahshi. And he does not want to as well have grief and sorrow when Wahshi had killed what? His uncle. Because he said to him, are you the one who killed my uncle? He said, it was from me, yes, messenger of Allah. Take your face away from me all the time. 
if you, if you are able, in istata'atah, an tughayyiba wajhaka anni fa'fa'al. So if I look at you, I'm going to remember my uncle. And I don't want to have any hatred. I don't have sadness and sadness and sorrows. And that's why Wahshi said, I'm going to do, just like I did in my jahiliyyah, the worst of things, I'm going to do in my Islam, the good thing. Just like I've killed one of the best people, I'm going to kill what? One of the worst people. He killed whom? Sayyidah al the one who claimed to be a prophet. And he says, I hope that this will be for that. But of course, Islam, yajubu ma qabla. Islam, yajubu ma qabla. I'll tell you, you may, you, you may be not digesting this while the Prophet Allah said to him, if you take your face away from me. I'll tell you. Imagine a person huh, who's a Catholic. Rate your mother. What are you going to do to him? I'm not going to say the word. And then you're about to do it and then he embraces Islam. And he repents to Allah. Are you able to look at him? I'm not. I don't want to see him. Because he reminds me of the rape of my mother. True or not? So the same thing here. So I, just to make it easier for you to understand why the brother, if you're able to take your face away from me. Because I don't want to remember the killing of my uncle. He killed him and by the way, he was killed cowardly. Nobody can face Hamza from the front. He has to wait for him. He's not facing him. And then he threw his... And he did not have anything with the war. Just wanted to kill him. So he gained his freedom. And that's what the Prophet said. Allah is amazed that two people will enter paradise. One can kill the other. One was killed in the sake of Allah. And the killer, he embraced Islam. He was killed in the sake of Allah. So one, he was killed in the sake of Allah. And the killer embraced Islam. And then he fought in jihad. He was killed in the sake of Allah. Both go to what? Paradise. Where is Hamza? Where is Wahshi? In paradise. Both in paradise. The killer and the killed one. Tayyip, coming back to the following hadith. Half past nine, yes? Just to make sure. Okay, we will finish inshallah in, in, in 10 minutes. Tawr. Hadith 725. Muad said the Prophet. 725 is an authentic, sorry. 726. 726. Al Abbas bin Abdul Muqtadi said, I said, Messenger of Allah, teach me something I can use as a supplication to Allah. He replied, Abbas, ask Allah for well-being. Then I waited a short time and came and said, teach me something I can use to ask Allah with. O oh, Messenger of Allah, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah is linked to the first yes, sentence. <laughs> the way he said it. Like, he said it. He did it again. Did it make sense? Okay, let's start again. And at first when Abdul Muttalib said, I said, Messenger of Allah, teach me something I can use as a supplication to Allah. He replied, Abbas, ask Allah for well-being. Then I waited a short time and came and said, teach me something I can use to ask Allah with, O Messenger of Allah. He said, Abbas, uncle of the Messenger of Allah, ask Allah for well-being in this world and the next. He repeated the same thing. Uncle, I'm choosing for you the best of Qutbah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 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 Sallallahu alayhi w
okay, and just put him aside because you're not doing showing off. So once you strike this, this is the clear sign of Iman. Because the person who is doing showing off, he will never have something to tell him that you're doing for showing off. He will just do it for showing off because he knows. So the shaitan is coming to tell you something in order to stop your good deed. So let's say for example that you are now going to help somebody by giving him money. Shaitan comes to you and tells you, are you doing it for the sake of that to tell the person that you are a good person? Don't listen to him. You're going for the sake of helping that brother, not for the sake of that person to help you. Then the shaitan will come to you, you know, it's better for you to go and give money to your auntie who is in such and such country, who she's more in need than that friend you're going to try to help. So you're going to say, no, you're going to stop that. Thank you very much for that, Muswas. Okay, I will go to the friend of mine, give him the money, and whatever he had told me this thing, I'm going to go and give as well. My auntie was in that country. And, uh, that shaitan, if he sees you doing like this, he's not going to come to you again. This man, he knows what he's doing. He's not going to remind you of good things now. What he's trying to do is to try to divert you from this to that to this. So whatever you hear, okay, thank you. I keep that. I'll do what my... Because once you take off your mind from what you have decided to do to, some, to do something else, that means he had won. Because he will do something else and else and he will never be able to give the help to that friend of yours, not to that auntie who lives in the exiled Y country. Okay? Father. Um, how do how do you do do your situation if the shaitan comes to you, for example, in like prioritizing things, for example? Uh, same thing, I said prioritization. Same thing. Hevel, yeah. more than the hadith. Yeah. You just do it according to what you believe you are good at. at. So you have capability. Some people are good and very good in memorizing the Quran faster than the hadith. Is is maybe my understanding more than hevel. So each you know the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. How many of them they were half of? Very few, akhi. Very few, they were half of the Qur'an. They were half of, of the Qur'an is in totality. But one of them to have all the Qur'an, maybe eight, or eight companions. All the Qur'an, eight companions. After the companions, oh, hundreds became. Okay, so during the companions time, this one is half of, for example, Surah al anfal This one is half of Surah Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran. This one is half of Surah Al-Hujurat. Huh? But to have all of it, not more than eight companions whole Qur'an. But they had the whole of the Qur'an and an open entirety, yes, the whole of the Qur'an as well, all of them together. And also they got written documents with that. Now. Nah. <coughs> um, you know, earlier on you were talking about raising the hands in, in supplication. No. Is there a specific etiquette of how you raise your hands here? I said that a number of times. Raising up the hands is, it is not to empty hand, which is like this. To show you the unrams. This is or when you seek, this is the imam when he seeks rain, for example. The imam is seeking rain and he's doing the khalbat. For, the, for you as a person, when you raise up the hands, there's an etiquette of to make a, that hands of yours, okay? Like that, okay? Like this, facing you. So you could cover your face like this. You could do like that, okay? But this is not, hasn't been authenticated for this, okay? And also, which we. Lazy dua. <laughs> Lazy dua. You've seen people doing like this and then, Allah, Akbar Allah. It's like holding a watermelon. <laughs> what is this? It's lazy. So you put your hands like that together. Either, because hadith says that they used to cover their faces like in the crying. Okay? Or like this. Like that is ittihad. Is ittihad for the imam to be season rain. Now, Fadal. You know, you're saying some hadiths are unauthentic. So, what should we do? You know, from the book, should we cross them out? Well, no, you don't cross them out. Yeah. For very, I did not go. When you, uh, the question is, for the sake of the sister, yeah. um, his question is, is that when we have a hadith life in al-adab uh, uh, al what do we do? We cross it out. We don't cross out at all any hadith. What we do, we put next to it unauthentic because number of issues. Number one, first of all, you know that the adab al-mufrad. The Imam al-Bukhari did not make a condition, did not make a condition upon himself, like he made it in Sahih al-Bukhari, that everything he's going to put in there is to be authentic. In Sahih al-Bukhari, he made a condition upon himself. And number two is that we learn from the chapter title a lot, because he puts the chapter title and then he puts the hadith. 
Yes, it could be the hadith is unauthentic in its chain wise, but it's in meaning wise, it is what? Sound. The number of ahadith, which the meaning of it sound because it came from another hadith. But the wording of it is what? Is not correct. We can't say that the Prophet had uttered this word. But the meaning of it is 100%. For example, some of the scholars, they say, مِنْ حُسْنِ إِسْلَامِ From the good and excellence of a Muslim is to leave what is not of his concern. Some of the scholars, like our children, makes hasan. But some others make it unauthentic. But the ones who make it unauthentic, they say what? The meaning of it what? 100% sound. So whether they say it's unauthentic, or the one who says hasan authentic, the meaning of it is what's sound. But there is some of the ahadith, it is unauthentic in its chain, and it is what? Not authentic in its meaning. That's the one that just makes, uh, uh, basically, right on next to it, it's not authentic in its chain, authentic in its sound, or sound meaning. It's not authentic in its chain, and it's not sound in its meaning, or contradicts the such and such hadith. There is a hadith which is not authentic, and contradicts what we have learned from the Prophet. Give you an example. There's a hadith that says that the Prophet of Allah had heard about people whenever they are urinating or defecating, they don't face the qibla, they face other than the qibla. So the Prophet of Allah, he said, which is not authentic by the way, that is supposed to be said, حَوِّلُوا مِقْعَدَتِي إِلَى الْقِبْلَةِ Turn my potty, which I urinated it, towards the Qibla, to show that these people are wrong. This hadith is not just uh, unauthentic in its chain, it's munkar. The meaning of it is not sound. How could the Prophet of Allah would fix something like this to tell these people that you're wrong? Uh, change my potty so I could urinate deliberately towards the Qibla in order to show that they are wrong. And we know the Prophet of Allah, he said, لا تشرقوا do not لا تستقبلوا قبلة ولا تستقبلوها ولكن شرقوا وغربوا Do not face the Qibla when you urinate. Do not put your back to the Qibla when you urinate. And go to the east and the west. East and the west when you are living in Medina. Because then it becomes Mecca for you on the south. But if you're living in India, if you go to east and west, you go to the Qibla. Do you understand? India or Morocco. <laughs> but if you are in the north, in the south, yes, you go to the east and west. Now, Allah Ta'ala. Is that the question? Fadal? Um, Sheikh, what can you do to protect your deeds? So if, if I'm going to now stay a bit, then the adhan is going to be cool. So I have to be staying in the masjid. Okay? <laughs> so uh, either I will do the isha with you, or I'll continue. Uh, what time should I be stopping? With, uh, should, I, should I continue? Huh? Stop? Okay. I've been called to stop. So just give me the last question. Uh, what can you do to protect your deeds from being corrupted in terms of intention? What terms of deeds? Terms of, uh, yes, let's say if you're trying to do a good deed, but you're afraid of the intention being corrupted from a small shirk, what can you do to protect your deeds? Well, yani, the intention of yours to make sure that it is sincere to Allah, I would say the best thing is that you are not doing just that single ibadah for the sake of Allah gives you what you want. So intention is basically a training uh, 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 action. That means you are all the time doing good things. So you become now uh, on a pattern of sincerity. So it's not a person who's always showing off, showing off, brother, make this just that single dua to be sincere. It's impossible for him to do it. Because his pattern is all the time on bad, bad, bad. So one person, he says to me, I'll give you an example. He said, I go to the Haram, 27th night, the Imam is making dua, he's crying, people next to me from the right, on the left are crying, I can't cry. He's asking me, and he's a relative of mine. So it's like he's asking me, have you got a medicine? <laughs> so I said, I can't tell you, my cousin, go to the chemist and get something in order for you to get crying. What is happening is that your heart became so hard that you are not having the same response into your heart like these people, if they're true people, and they're sincere in their cry, like these people when they hear the words of Allah, they cry. Abu Bakr, is he the same as, for example, as Umar, or even as Abdullah ibn Masoon? Abu Bakr, once he sees the Quran, he cries. Because his heart is always on good deeds, good deeds, good deeds. So the same thing I would tell the brother, so if you don't need to have sincerity the first time, maybe you need to be trained. So more good ibadah, more good ibadah, then it becomes easy. Another becomes so. Even the scholars of deen, they say, أَصْعَبُ مَا عَلَيْتُ عَلِيهِ فِي نَفْسِي الْإِخْلَاسِ The most hard things that I want to treat for myself is sincerity. And those are the righteous people. 